I think we're I think we're emptying out chat realm. We're like, oh shit, Rift of Misery's on. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> That's our job. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 92 for Wednesday, the 24th of August, 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else matters. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and I didn't ask Tom if he was ready to go when I hit the button. How are you guys doing? <laughs> doing good. Dude, I, I, I would have swore you just said it's Wednesday. It, yeah, 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 Wednesday. Is that why this week seemed to go so fast? I was like, hey, yeah, it's Friday already. This is the shortest week ever. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the bad part's going to come after the show when you realize you got to get up for work in the morning. Exactly. Like, Son of a bitch. Which one is supposed to be the start of the end of the week? <laughs> right. Oh, man. So uh, we are here with, uh, with Jury Facts himself. Um, I, I just took. Beyond, this is awesome. <laughs> You've actually been on Ritual Misery before during our New Year's Eve event uh, yep. last year, which, of course, we are going to be doing again this year in some form or fashion. Details to come, hopefully, before two days prior. And uh, um, <laughs> so that was awesome. It was a great time to have you on there. And, and it, was, it was one of those things, me and Cam were going down our list of like, hey, who do we need to get on before our 100th episode? What, you know, we're, we're racking and stacking, and we're like, Jury Facts has never actually been on an episode. How has this, has this escaped us? This is bullshit. Yep, I'm freaking out when I realized that. I was like, how the hell? Like, really? Tom has <laughs> never been on? Okay, yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate um, the invite. I was, uh, I was definitely surprised. It's, uh, I don't know, I, it's, 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 it's interesting and fun for me to do this type of stuff. So, because I'm not used to being on camera. Mm. So, yeah, 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 yeah. You're not used to being on camera except for uh, periscoping your entire life. So, <laughs> right, um, but he never shows himself, and, that, and that's the thing I was going to explain to our audience that that aren't familiar with Tom, that he shoots a ton of video, he, and he's a lot he's of essentially pictures. he's essentially the chronicler of Diamond Club events. Is that's, really what it comes that, down to. <laughs> well, that's that's kind of the the whole idea behind the original like persona of Jury Facts was, you know, I remember <clears throat> I'm not trying to get into whole details and stuff, but you know. Like that's, I remember sitting back during NSFW show days and just being like, man, I wish I was there and they would do the show and that was cool, but you never saw anything else from the rest of the, from the conventions and the interactions and all this other stuff. Yep. So the first time I went, I was just like, I want to show as many people as I can. And it just kind of caught on and it became expected, which was more than okay with me because I really enjoy doing it. So and it's just so a lot of fun. So uh, uh, for a typical day event, how many extra batteries do you typically keep in your bag? <laughs> <laughs> this must be a Tom thing because Tom Merritt always seems to have what he needs right next to him. Yeah. <laughs> well, we discussed, we, we discussed the availability gremlins a few episodes ago and uh, yeah, not, not something we have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Audio gremlins instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got plenty of audio gremlins and sons of bitches. Well, I was I was sure to get into the chat realm and spray Gremlin Be Gone before the show started. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that holds. Awesome. Um, so real quick, uh, now how how long have you been involved in Diamond Club specifically? Um, I can never remember the episode, but it was an SFW show. It was like one of the first uh, problem solvers where mm. uh, um, they went through and did all that and like something went wrong and they called somebody that they found out later was like under 18 and they like tried to fix it. And then I think it was, ended up being a joke. It's been such a long time, but um, <laughs> I originally found the show on my old school uh, Blackberry Storm. They had Blackberry podcasts mm -hmm, and I was mm -hmm. searching through comedy and I found it and I was just like hooked. I'm in. I'm done. That's it. So, so Shut it out. quick story for you. I had a BlackBerry Storm. Um, I got I got that because Verizon didn't have the iPhone at the time. Oh, you've actually got yours, huh? Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, see this. And is, this yet again, Tom has what he needs right there. My, mine's right there in the closet. Like it's it's, <laughs> it's 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 not even packed away. It's on the shelf right there. Like I just I can't quite reach it. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> that's still in the original box, even. Like, <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was, I was at my BlackBerry storm was how I was, I was using a borrowed 3g connection in Kuwait. And the only oh. thing that I could download, the only thing I had time to download was buzz out loud back when they, when they were reaching their thousandth episode, in fact. So, and, yeah. uh, right after that is when I, when I found, uh, uh, Leo Laporte's whole network and well, that was fun. BB live and all that. I ended up watching, I went back and watched all the BB Live stuff, which they're just so great. Like, this is horrible, but anybody that is that knows me knows that I'm, I don't care. But I, I, went, I, I downloaded all of them onto the phone and I would watch them backslash listen while driving. And like, they're, they're great background commentary type of stuff because nothing happens for two hours. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just like listening to friends have a conversation. Yes, and especially yeah, especially the early shows. It was really a. I mean, so we've done a lot of feeling and and uh, hoping and kind of grab stuff here and there and making you know making the shaping the show into what it has currently become, minus the audio gremlins. When you're watching the BB Live show, it's it's a genuine. We have no idea where this is going. And if anything sticks at all, somebody write that shit down because we're not going to remember. Yep. And it, it's it's like the 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 early shit show of the of the internet right there. It, the the evolution of that show in and of itself was one of the coolest things that I I really thought was just really neat because from what I can tell, it kind of started out as like a magic conversation interview type of thing and then it slowly worked into you know justin being on and then it was just like well screw the magic we're funny yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah justin came on like once and he wasn't on for a couple weeks and he came on again and he was off again and then from like the, the third uh appearance on he's just never been never been gone he just never left <laughs> yeah, yeah that's really what it was I, <laughs> I still have yet to figure out how brett and uh Odakta still showed up on that show. They were just there and then always there. Yeah, just hanging out. Like they, they just show up at Brian's house and just hang out in the spare room. Yeah. Like we're just gonna be here. <laughs> yep. How you doing? We're here. We're not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> you you have beer? We have arrived. Exactly. <laughs> so right. Amos, did you get into some geeky stuff this week? I did, I did, and it is ultimately a failure, just like most things in my life. Um <laughs> I my my wife and I are looking at our internet plan, and within th within three and a half weeks last month, we used 800 gigabytes on our internet plan. We're allowed a terabyte, and we had used 800 gigabytes by the time the, the month rolled around. And so my wife tasked me with with uh, finding out a way to isolate which computer or which user or which program or whatever else was sucking away all of our bandwidth. Because holy shit, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I grabbed an old Netgear router. Uh, no, it's it's actually in the garage now. See, I can't grab anything, and nothing's fucking here when I need it. <laughs> um, I grabbed an old in Netgear router that I had installed gargoyle on. Uh, it's a open source firmware, and updated the gargoyle, and it, it does everything that I needed to do. It's beautiful. Ta uh, write out the IP table and uh, assign you know, each MAC address to a certain IP, then every person has their own range of IPs that they're responsible for, and take all that, and you can tell who's using what. It would have been great. But every time that I hooked it in, of course, I've already got the, the time capsule and the Airport Express, or Airport Extreme upstairs on opposite ends of the house. Every time I hooked up that Netgear router and then plugged everything else into it, only half the stuff on the internet would come on. Oh, everything it, it like it just arbitrarily decided, hey, these ones are coming on. Those ones can't come on. And there was no rhyme or reason to it. I tried. I figured maybe it was one of the routers wasn't driving. So maybe, you know what? No, no, it didn't fucking matter. Didn't matter. Even if it was <laughs> wired, like the, the, the beast, the computer I'm on right now was hardwired in at one time. It wouldn't go. But then I reset the router and it would go. But then my iPad wouldn't. <laughs> so it was, it was completely arbitrary. Ultimately, it was like five hours of failure. And now we're back to the original system. I have no idea who's using what. <laughs> so that was my geeky thing of the week. Holy shit. I, I, if, if you know, if, if anyone out there knows of an easy way to track who is using how much Wi-Fi or LAN data, um, 
without buying $300 plus of equipment, let me know and that'd be wonderful. Just shoot me an email or just shoot me a, a thing on Twitter at Ethan Kane and let me let me know because I seriously got to figure out which one of these hoodlums upstairs is tearing <laughs> through all my damn internet watching their YouTube while they're on their phone and they're playing PlayStation. Like, it's whatever. I, I got to figure it out. And yes, before you ask, Netflix is turned down to the lowest resolution and, uh, you know, like, seriously, <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, damn. How, well, how, how about you, man? Uh, I, I hear uh, uh, when it comes to gear and uh, having problems with gear, you kind of went through your own solution process this week. Yeah, man. So the, I would have to say the geekiest thing that I did this week was set up a new iMac. I yeah. bought a new iMac. Yeah. Um, but that's not really all that geeky because it took me like 10 minutes and no effort. <laughs> There's like no geek to Apple gear anymore. You just turn it on. You log in with your Apple ID and... You just kind of walk away from it. Right. And pretty much already set up. And, and that's the beautiful thing about it. That's why I'm a fan yeah. of Apple. Oh, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Oh, God. I love the Apple ecosystem so much. Um, <laughs> but I am, I am planning a project that's a, a bit more geeky, I guess. Yeah? Uh, yeah. So I, I've been on a, a Wi-Fi connection ever since we started this thing. And I think uh, it's yeah, time we to know. go hardwired. And I'm planning out my Cat 6. Yeah. So now, now did you did you call your 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 cable company and ask about increasing your internet plan? Yeah, well, right now I'm at the I'm at the highest level right now that I'm comfortable spending the money on. <laughs> um, so so I, you're, you're, I, you're at the my, you're at the my, highest my, commercial my, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I'm I, I think my speeds are fine right now, but it, it's one of those things that if like if it becomes comes an issue if there's something that i cannot do because of my internet speed then yeah, yeah that's something i'll i'll readdress later yeah uh, but the, the main reason that i'm going wired is to just shake out the last bit of the the hiccup gremlins when it comes to you know the actual connection right so, so i got a quick question for you guys you guys obviously live in like bigger cities and stuff and you <laughs> deal with these oh no okay <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are talking like data caps and stuff. So, like I so, don't have that. So yeah, so so have. Kent lives Kent lives in like the fourth most populous city in New Mexico, which well yeah, which, other, other than, than Santa Fe, Fe I can't. yeah, other than Santa Fe and Albuquerque, like th- this actually might be the third largest city. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, it's probably the fourth because there is Las Cruces as well. So this is. But, yeah. but either way, it's, it's not, not saying a, a whole lot. And I live in... It's either a tiny city or a big town. And, and I, I live, I live in, what, in, in the outskirts of Wasilla, Alaska, which um, is like an hour north of Anchorage, the only real city in Alaska. Um, and it's probably... The valley, the area that I live in is probably maybe the fourth or fifth most populated area out of the least populated state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the great tundra, man. Yeah, um, but yeah, we get uh, we they just increased our cap from 750 to one terabyte, like last month. So, you know, there's so that's our, that says that Alamogordo is a sizable village. <laughs> are, are data caps starting to go away, or is it more for the? I, I don't, I I just don't understand data caps. So, so where where are you located, roundabouts? Uh, middle of nowhere, Ohio. Okay, um, that's what Lima, that's what Ohio. But I live way out in the country. Yeah, like I go through a small ISP. So, what kind of connection are you on? Uh, that's a, a has a wire. <laughs> 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 um, I seriously though, I think it's twelve down, six up. Oh, mm. that's that's decent how, for up. How, how do you live with yourself? <laughs> Uh, I I did what uh what he's doing. I went through and wi- hardwired everything. Like I have my main uh, router here. I have a router behind my TV for all my boxes. I ran wires all the way back, you know, to the other side to get everything wired in. Like the only thing that's on Wi-Fi are my iPads. Mm. So it makes it at least a little bit easier for the stable connections for connected devices to the televisions and computers and stuff but, right i mean it's not horrible but i want more right yeah. but i also don't have a data cap 
Well, and I have no idea how much I use. I've never looked. <laughs> so I'm probably using like nine gigs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh man. Yeah. So so data caps. They're uh, the real thing, and uh, they suck. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Fair true. enough. <laughs> um, now on this show we like to do a little thing that starts with this. And Kent, you don't have a TED talk in the in the doc. No talk. I, no yeah, talk in the doc. I didn't watch one this week. What? That's not yeah, how uh, this works, man. <laughs> Sometimes is how it works. No, 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 you're supposed to watch it, and you're supposed to make me feel guilty about not watching it. But I actually watched a 20 minute one this week. Where's oh, your shit? You man? made it for it. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how this works. <laughs> What did you watch, Davis? Um, I watched David Blaine, How I Held My Breath for 17 Minutes. Oh, my God. Um, just, er, I, I honestly, I, I so, looked at it. Wait, hold on, hold on. The TED Talk was longer than the actual event. By about two minutes. Jesus. Okay. All right, go ahead. I looked at a huge list of them, and this is the only one that actually seemed halfway interesting at the mindset that I was in, which was, one o'clock in the morning, been messing with the uh, audio shit all night long and just needed to get a TED Talk out of the way. I didn't realize that it was actually 20 minutes long until I was about three quarters of the way through it. So, <laughs> um, David Blaine is, is a magician. He, that's what he does. And he, he's not, um, you know, one of these mysticism magicians that tries to make you believe that everything he's doing, you know, like he's not Chris Angel, basically. He's more of a pen and teller magician. Like, hey, I'm going to do something. It's going to be extraordinary. Anybody could do this. I just know how to do it and make it look like it's, you know, perfectly fluid. That's the kind of magician he is. He right. went through a series of stunts where he was living in a, uh, living in a coffin for like seven days. He lived in a, in a, a glass cage or whatever, you know, um, for like three days. He went... So many days with nothing but water, like 44 days, something like that, with nothing but water while hanging from a bridge in a, in a, a see-through uh, casket thing or whatever, see-through box in London. Mm -hmm. And as his ultimate stunt, he wanted to uh, hold his breath longer than anybody else had. It's always something he was fascinated with or whatever else. And this TED Talk, it, it's not one that is overly it's, – it's actually a TED Med or Med TED or whatever – it's wow. not one that is overly practiced. It's not the pacing isn't very good. It's just David Blaine, no shit, with some notes telling the story about how he went through it and did it and how he made it happen. Um, very personal and very personable, and I just I loved it. I'm not I'm not an over overly huge David Blaine fan. Um, mm -hmm. The talk itself wasn't exquisite like we typically expect TED talks to be, but it was very approachable and very interesting. A lot because, or uh, highly because of his personal touch and his, his uh, humanity in it. Oh, right on. Nice. So, I, I recommend it. It's not going to blow your mind. Tom? You're not, you're not going to be like, holy shit, oh my God, I'm going go, to go hold my breath for 17 minutes and four seconds or anything. But, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. So, how about you, Tom? Yeah. Do you, wait, wait, real quick for Tom. Do you... Are you a fan of David Blaine or, uh, you know, like Chris Angel or anyone like that? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not um, either. Like, it's, I, I don't me, like, it's like. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's just like a, a sensationalism of like personal torture to me. Like, it's not to me the those sorts of stunts are not interesting to me. Like, I, I don't know. What, what were you going to say? That's kind of what I was getting at. The the David Blaine stuff, in my opinion, his stuff is just way too slow. And as, as impressive as it is, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I, I just, I don't, you know? And uh, the street, oh God, what was his name? Uh, the, the other guy. The, Chris uh, Angel. Chris Angel. Yeah. His stuff, he, he always, in my opinion, he, he felt like he was trying to put off this super mystical like vibe of ooh and i'm just like yeah dude like you're using a string like i can see it in the camera like <laughs> like you know it you know camera tricks don't impress me you know that that's that's my opinion like 
Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm with you completely. That, that's one of the reasons I respect Penn and Teller so much is because they don't, they, 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 they go about it in a way that's not mystical in any way, shape, or form. It's like, here's a trick. You could do it if you knew the secrets behind it. It's nothing special. We're fooling you. We're fucking with your mind right now. And this is the result. And it's entertaining enough and in, in your face enough that you're going to come back and, and pay for it and see it again. Yeah. 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 You know, um, and, and that's, yeah. Th- th- this is, uh, other than, like I said, the, uh, the torture aspect of it, this is just, is, is really fascinating to see how he went through the preparation and kind of his identities or his, him identifying his own failures in it. That would be really interesting to watch. I, I honestly think I would watch him talk about how he pre- – like, I find that more interesting than him actually doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and honestly. I, I did, too, and that's, that's why I, I recommend it. Um, so you, uh, you have one that you'd like to talk about, Tom. What's up? Yeah, it's nowhere near as cool as that. But uh, I, I, I watch a lot of random stuff, but this is one that I've watched a while ago. I think it was, like, last year I originally came across it or something. And uh, it, it's, it teaches you, not really teaches you, but it shows you how important it is to connect to the people around you, whether it be everyday relationships, significant others, or random people that you meet and how you can, you know, instantly gain a certain level of trust and how you can be relatable to people to be more sociable and stuff like that. Um, I, I work in sales as my real job and, you know, I've always been good with it, but watching this kind of made me realize, oh, if I have a common interest or if I just kind of go along with what they're saying and have a relatable experience with what they had, we can kind of have a connection and, you know, have that bond, so to speak, you know, and I've always found uh, connections with people interesting, just how you can mimic people and they will instantly love you. It's crazy to me, you know, just doing simple things like that and this was just another little one on top of that that I thought was interesting that I've always kind of went back to a couple times and rewatched. So, so here's my thing about this. And anytime you're reading a book or seeing a talk or hearing someone talk about um, how to how, how to be approachable and how to find people and how to communicate and all that kind of stuff, you'll you'll notice that it's just like management books. There's about two percent of it that's actually decent. There's eight percent of it that is. Maybe if you're if it's the right for you, you could get something out of it. The other ninety percent is complete bullshit, and what you have to do is you have to suffer through all hundred percent of it to find that two percent that's really valuable, and that eight percent that might be valuable to you. And yes. uh, I, I think these things are interesting, especially if you can condense it down into you know a, a fifteen to twenty minute talk. And it just kind of cuts most of that ninety that ninety percent bullshit right out of the equation. Like I don't have time in a 15 minute talk to spin you in circles about how awesome I am at my shit. So I kind of have to just shove the, the, the 2%, maybe some of the other 8% down your throat and move on. So I like it. Honestly, that's one thing I love about the Ted talks and stuff is cause you can watch a, the first minute of it and you're just like, well, I'm really not sure if this is what I want. Skip to like the middle and you're like, okay, I kind of see where he's going with this and then start over. It's yep. not a book that you have to read to the end and go, that was a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you get halfway through the book and you're like, I'm already fucking halfway here. <laughs> I got to finish it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm already committed. <laughs> what, what, if, what if there's another nugget? You know, I've only found 1%. What if there's another nugget of like 3% of actual shit at the end of it that I might be able to find? What if I missed that and I've already suffered halfway through it? I have to finish now. And of course you get to the end and realize that 1% was the 10%. Like, <laughs> like damn it. Ah, uh, sucking at life, sucking at life. So uh, I'm guessing this would be one that you would recommend. It is, yes. There you go, Kent. Now you've got two recommendations to f- to fill your weekend for next week. <laughs> right on. I'm probably going to watch Tom's because I, I, I'm I like him. I, I like knowing about it, like the interactions of, of people. And um, I particularly like, like group dynamics and watching group dynamics and how people – uh, interact with other groups of people and just the whole that whole um thing just fascinates me so i'm I'm almost for sure gonna watch this one uh, i might have to work myself up to the the david blaine one. so i like sitting in bars <laughs> getting drunk and watching people does that count 
Yeah, that's exactly this the same thing. <laughs> that's I, why I like people watching so much because I'm trying to like study them and figure out why they're acting the way. I they just act. like coming up with different stories, like alternate universe stories. You know, somebody sits down at a bar; they're actually a <laughs> CIA agent slipping a note to to this fucking this Russian guy. You know. Uh, yeah, and uh, coming up with, like long, long stories and everything else that I'm just gonna forget in like ten minutes because I have another beer. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, the next time that you're in a bar, you need to live tweet the alternate reality of somebody. <gasps> Ooh, yes! Oh, that's there a- we go. There we that go. Is, and with with, pic- with pictures, if I can take them, right? Oh yeah, yeah, like little snippets and stuff like this. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh god, dude. <laughs> Uh, the lady just came to the bar and ordered a vodka tonic. <laughs> but I saw the bartender slip in the pill. Yes! I saw I, the bartender slip I in saw the pill. The, I saw the thumb drive underneath the glass. Yeah. But you, 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 know, <laughs> you, know, you know the problem. I'll tweet all that out there and I'll forget to turn my location off. And like <laughs> so, so the cops will come in there rolling in there deep like, we know you're in here. <laughs> Well, see, you're you're in a lot so shit. Like, Russian espionage may not be that far off. It's that's it's, it's, it's kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> you're just it's like, like shut up. Like, like I can't, I I can't say much more than than yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> damn my my, my actual job. <laughs> oh um, shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. So, um, so there's some very interesting things happened just randomly on the old interwebs this week. No way. And, uh, and, and, and so normally we don't, we don't talk about trolling. Like who gives a shit about trolling, right? Trolling's stupid. Trolling's dumb. Like if you're a troller, then, or you're a troll or what, what, just get the fuck off the internet. Just make it a better place and be gone. Okay. I found this one particularly interesting. Um, it, so we we i don't even know how to explain like the relationship between us and snubs um snubs is a woman that goes that, that she goes by snubs her actual name is shannon morse she works for, at hack five um she's a a media oh there we go she's a media producer she's a geek nerd whatever you want to call her she's a hacker in the truest sense of the word she's an amazing geek personality to begin with and then this week she's on a podcast or on a video. I'm not even sure which because it didn't specify. Um, but she gets, she comes on Twitter and she says, apparently every time I wear a flowy shirt on a podcast, that means I'm pregnant, which means I've been continually pregnant for 10 years. And right. then comes back in, and you can tell she's getting ramped up. She says, I shouldn't have to wear a tight-fitting fucking shirt every episode to appease you when I just want to be comfy. She links to a, a Medium art- article, or the Bold Italic article, which we don't need to get into. Um, and then the next email, which is what I... This is where I fell in love with this whole conversation thread. That, well, not, not the next email. The next tweet is where I fell in love with it. It's actually a picture of the email she received. And it says, Shannon, I need to ask, as you have been wearing very loose-fitting shirts lately, are you pregnant? If so, congratulations. Ron from New Jersey. Her response, and this is where I genuinely thought... This is great. This is where I thought it just got uber interesting. Her response, via email, fuck off. So there it is. Um, Real quick, my personal favorite about that response, no exclamation points, no all caps. Just fuck off. Yes, yeah, factual. It was, fa- it, was, it was a statement. Yes. Like it, it, was, it was a command. It was not, uh, n- not overly expressive. Um, it was just simply fuck off. Like <laughs> simple. And then his response to that was, Whatever, bye, did not expect that from you. And her overall tweet that heads it up, and of course I'm showing this on the video, <clears throat> says, but you thought it was A-OK to email asking that? And then, of course, it goes on. I'm, I'm going to show the quick stream here. Um, it, it goes on for a while. She has a coworker talk to him about what's going on and, and why that, would, that wouldn't be OK. 
and this and that. Now, that might not even be interesting to some people. I think it's really interesting because until I read this, I didn't realize I felt this way. But when is it appropriate to ask a woman if she's pregnant versus when is it definitely not appropriate? That's a great question because that's one of the first things that I thought of as well. Because like I, part of me almost responded like how, like when is it okay to ask? But then I was just like, nope, not doing that. I don't want to get in this. And, <laughs> right. you know, but I actually asked one of my friends uh, and she was just kind of like, never, ever. Like you just don't ask if we want you to know, we will tell you. And I'm just like, Fair enough. Right. Well, here, and here's my first observation about this whole thing was that the guy the, in the original email, I felt like he was like genuinely curious and thought that he was writing a nice email. Like he, he's just ignorant. He's not an asshole. And her response of fuck off was kind of like, I mean, to this guy it was probably like, where did this even come from? What the fuck? And I mean, I kind of, I kind of feel for him, but at the same time, like, life lesson, dude. <laughs> like, <don't... laughs> so, so I, I thought about it a while, and I, I, I don't subscribe. And maybe, of course, if you're seeing this video, and it, hopefully, if you're hearing this audio, <laughs> you know that I, I I'm not, a, I'm not a woman. Uh, what I, I, ha I haven't been for years years <laughs> um well played sir so so I, I i mean i'm no expert on this at all and i didn't even bother to ask my wife about it because i was like you know what? i just want to what good is a fucking podcast about my opinion on shit if i can't put my foot in my mouth once or twice during an episode so yeah you're, yeah. yeah uh my thing is this to me the line is drawn if, if I know you personally, if, if we are personal friends, if you are part of my inner circle, then I could probably ask. But if you're not in that inner circle, there's not a chance in hell I'm ever asking, ever, 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 ever. Now, here's the problem with that logic. You ready for this? If you're part of my inner circle, if you're part of that close group of friends that I would feel comfortable asking that to, I probably don't have to ask because there's enough other signs there that I'm going to know that you're pregnant if you're pregnant. Well, and okay, so here's the thing. This is like the elephant in the room, the thing that we have not said. The whole, the whole problem with this question is the underlying, like the implication is, hey, you look fat. That, that's the, exactly how it's taken, yes. Right. And that's the whole thing. So, like, if, if you picked up on clues elsewhere, like, because, you know, uh, certain tweets that this person was making, you don't even know what they look like. But they've been tweeting certain things, like, you know, picking out names or, you know, uh, figuring out what kind of crib I want, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you asked in that context, this conversation wouldn't even be happening. Right? Like, 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 if, so if you're... Well, Space if thing. you're if you're hacking into their Amazon account and seeing that they're browsing baby clothes and, and cribs and shit like that, then yeah, that's probably an appropriate time to ask them if they're pregnant. But is that a question? No matter what, do you still ask it outright? Now, keep in mind, looking at my screen here, I see guy, guy, and guy. Exactly. So our answer is going to be wrong, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> but I'm trying. Here. Especially but, if we agree. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Uh, you, I don't think that you ask that question straight out regardless. I think it should be, hey, I noticed you were looking at cribs. Does that mean that you're pregnant? Expecting? You, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. you know, no matter how you expecting, pregnant, knocked up, you know, got a baby daddy, however the hell you want to say it. Right. It's still the same. I'm using this as a launching pad for this question. So you know what I'm referring to. I'm not calling you, hey, it looks like you've gained some pounds. Are you expecting? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even think it has are, to are go. You gonna, are, are you about to have a meatloaf baby? I don't, <laughs> like, I don't even expect, I don't even think it has to go so far as the, the 
uh, uh, the connotation that they're gaining weight or that they're fat or whatever else. I think it just simply goes to, especially in a public forum like this. Well, maybe not, you know, that wasn't a public email, but to a public personality, who the fuck are you to ask any kind of personal questions to someone else? Like if if just random person asked me on the on the street, "Hey, are you having surgery on your back?" <laughs> what the fuck am I going to answer that for? No, no, but okay, you have to keep in mind. And this is something that I I can wrap my head out head around a little more. You watch somebody on a screen. You have a relationship with them. They just don't know it. <laughs> right. No, I'm serious. Like it may not I'm not talking like a creepy relationship, but it's like watching your, you know, your favorite news anchor or your favorite comedian and you listen to all their stuff, you watch all their stuff, you watch it whenever they go on whatever night show that you normally don't ever watch. You you follow them, you know their story, so whenever you see them, you feel that you know them. But yet they're looking at you going, "Who the fuck are you and why do I care?" Like right. that's really inappropriate. You shouldn't ask this or say that. But in the same time, you're sitting back going, but but I know that this is a thing or this is a legitimate question or I'm not trying to be mean because I'm a fan. I'm just right. curious. And, you know, that response right. that he yeah, got. And that's, I, how I, I that's how I actually. Yeah. Yeah. Kent, that was, that was, yeah, that's exactly that's exactly it. What? <laughs> Okay, I thought that I missed something, but I'm glad we're on the same page here. Yeah, so I... Oh, that's right what now. you did. You're just like, yeah, I agree. Oh, no, I, was, I stopped talking because, no, because no. I was stepping on you. You, kept, you weren't done with your sitting, so I was like, oh, let me let him finish. Oh, okay, so you did stop. Okay, you, I, thought, you, yeah. I thought you cut out, and I was just like... What, yeah, it, what? It, it looked like, it looked like you got eaten by the by the uh, the connection gremlins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> all right, so Sorry. so oh, so essentially ahead. essentially we all agree that our advice to every other other uh, red blooded male out there, American or otherwise, don't fucking ask. Yeah, just play it safe. Yeah, no matter what motive, let, or let or them lose. tell you when they want to tell you, and just fucking leave it alone. Don't don't bother. Don't ask personal information of a public figure, regardless. Unless you have an actual personal relationship with them. Uh, sa sa is it Sassine? Sass Sassian? Sassian. Sass okay. Brings up a good question. Are, with the internet and everything, uh, are there no secrets because of the internet? Why are people even asking things like that? I think that is a great question. Um, sometimes they, are, they could be pregnant and they're just not far enough along, but they're kind of showing a little bit. But that's still not – I think a Google search would definitely be warranted before you just email somebody, are you pregos? <laughs> so, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to show my, 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 my podcasting age a little bit here. Back when Natalie Del Conte announced that she was pregnant, um, she came on and she was already, already several months along before she announced that she was pregnant. And then almost immediately had to come back and reproach the situation saying, no, I'm not going to go and marry the father of my child right now. We're going to do that when we want. And then it was, uh, hey, we're going to have to, you know, I'm not changing my name right now. We'll change my, my name when I want, you know, when my career changes or whatever else. I've already got the Del Conte name established. And then eventually she did change it to Natalie Morris and, you know, her and Clayton Morris are cruising through life, beautiful family and, and making millions of, according to my Twitter feed, they make billions of dollars in real estate. Um, but you know, it, even like that was, that was 2012. That was what fucking four and a half years ago or something like that. And it was already an issue then. It's just, it's never a thing. It, it let the, let people reveal personal information on their timeline. Don't even bother approaching it and trying to hurry it up or anything else. So, I agree. All right, Kent. Um, why don't you uh, jump to the next thing while I read this whole paragraph from Jackie Hearn down here? Holy shit! <laughs> I, I saw that. I don't know if you saw me. I was just like, I started. To, I looked over. And I was just like, uh, okay, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw it pop up, and I was like, 
I'll just I'll scroll up and read that later. <laughs> uh, no, so something that I've been noticing, I I follow at POTUS on Twitter, which is the the president of the United States' Twitter account. And I noticed something whenever the POTUS account tweets like the next 3,000 responses to his account is dad. What <laughs> the fuck is that? What does that mean? Why? Like, what is that? I, see, I, I, I've seen this in the show notes, and I had no idea what the hell you were talking about. Like, the, I, I, I stopped following POTUS when I realized that I, I, I just I don't, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So... I, I I don't know which which trimming it was, but during one of the trimmings of my uh, of my my following pool, uh, I I cut the POTUS out of there. Do you, do you have any idea, Tom, why why the internet insists on calling the president dad? Is that a Obama specific thing, or is that a president? Thing or I have what is like I, I'm just happy that they're not calling him daddy or poppy, um, and <laughs> it's just dad. So. I mean, let them, I don't, I have no idea for this. <laughs> <laughs> now, some, some theories that I've had is that the president is an, uh, is an authority figure and, and people, you know, say like, so like the president says, you know, Hey, we're going to do this. And then people sarcastically say like, okay, dad, fine. Maybe, I don't know. Any merit to that? Amos, what do you think? Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I think that's, that's reaching a little bit. I, 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 I did read a few things, a few uh, ideas on why that might be. And all of them came out to either racist bullshit or presumptuous fucktards. And, um, I really just, I, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody just started doing it and it just caught on. Yeah. Either way, it's not going to last very much longer because, regardless of what the conspiracy theorists say, he's out of there in June or January twentieth or twenty third or whatever it is, yeah. and there'll be a whole well, n- whole new batch of assholes in there. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But that that's why I was asking: is it is it a president thing or is it a so like if if um, Hillary Clinton becomes president, will it change the mom? Or like if, if Donald Trump becomes president, will it you know will that continue? Will it be dad? You know, I'm, like, I don't, I'm I don't more. Know. I, I don't understand. I, I'm 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 almost more interested in knowing if Obama is going to pass on the at POTUS um, Twitter handle to the new president, or if he's going to keep it for himself. No, 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 no. That that belongs to the office of the president. That so Obama has at Barack Obama, like that's his yeah. own. Like that pushes his agenda. The uh, Announcements from the office of POTUS come through at POTUS. It still says President Obama, and it still talks about his agenda. Well, because the POTUS is President that's, Obama. That's, right. Right. So whenever, whoever gets elected next, uh, <laughs> it, it will, it will right. still say at POTUS, but with a different name and check mark beside it. Exactly. And, yep. and hopefully a different picture, if they can figure that out. And stuff. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> oh, man. That would be hilarious, though. Oh, my God. First at POTUS brings up George Washington. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> I declare thee, <laughs> hey, Siri, send. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, geez. That was the, the first press secretary was named Siri. None of that is none of that is All good. All she did was research. <laughs> oh man, she could only say seven hundred and twenty different phrases. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Don't you dare get nasty with her. <laughs> so so I did a quick Google search because that's what I do is Google search. Um, why do people call President Obama dad or daddy? It's more of like a father figure as if they agree with him or this is the best or BDSM. (laughs) (laughs) Those are like the top two like, oh, it's because they respect him and look up to him like a father figure. Okay, that I get that. Or they're just into some creepy shit. (laughs) Oh, Oh, man. man. That's awesome. So the uh, the at POTUS Twitter account was open in 2008. Which is pretty early in Twitter's history. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, and then uh, Obama took it over in 2011, and it's been Obama since. So again, who's is, is Obama going to relinquish it? What what if he refuses to relinquish the Apotus, uh Twitter Wait, handle? He took it over in 11. In 2011. Yep. I don't I don't think he has a choice. It's like saying that, you know, it, it, it's his. It's not like Twitter owns it and they're going to assign it to somebody. It's not nationally assigned no, to anybody. No, 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 no. Twitter doesn't own it. The right. office of the president owns it. Yes. It's like if you that's like if you ran your squadron's um, website. Like you you were the one that registered that domain or whatever. Well, okay, it's on a dot mill, but but let's just say, or your company's website, right? You're the webmaster for your company's website, and you go work for another company. You don't take the domain with you. you don't, it's not yours. It belongs to that office. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, okay, I, I, this is strange to me that this is even a... a yeah, dip, like, like he, once he's not the president of the United States, he will not <laughs> carry president of the United States Twitter. <laughs> that, but... <laughs> That's like, th- he'll th- get, th- oh my God, like, how great would it be? Dude, somebody needs to register F POTUS if that isn't already taken. Former president of the United States. Yeah. That could also imply something else, though. I know. <laughs> <F POTUS>. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is a picture of a former president. Well, well, well you, you've, also, you've also got FLOTUS, the first lady of the United States, right? What right, are they, right. what are they, what are they gonna, is it going to be first gentleman of the United States? So F G O U T U S. No, I think I think Ooh. Bill should just take over Flotus. Yeah, he and just dress and drag and fucking own it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not going to stop anybody from wearing what they want to wear. Uh, if, you can, if you can talk to the FBI investigators three days before the the you know results come out of that investigation, I'll see why he can't just do anything he wants. That's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what the Clintons have been doing for years. So um, next on our list is shit to talk about. <laughs> oh, what you got? Oh man, um, epipens, those lovely little things that we that people jab themselves with when they have an allergy attack, yep. have apparently gone up by eight hundred percent or something like that um, in cost in the last five years because one company has the trademark and they're just basically running it wild. Yeah, so when you say it, it went up in cost, not in production cost. Oh, no. But cost to the consumer. Yeah. Yeah, and this seems to be a trend in the, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, I want to say medical industry, but that's not. Pharma? Pharmaceutical. The, the, in the pharmaceutical uh, realm, this is like, this seems to be a trend. Medicines that people need and can only get from one source. That one source jacks up the price. Yep. Um, which it's not even like they're expensive medicines. Like you know, it's not some miraculous cure or something that truly is expensive. It's just like, hey, here's uh, Advil, but only one company can make that, so now it's a hundred dollars. Right. Right. Yeah. It's. Uh, I, I really. I don't. I don't know if this is is, is a consequence of trademark law. If it's a if it's a consequence of just capitalism running wild, um, but either way, it's really shitty. It's really, really, really shitty. And there's things like this that that bring to mind that we really need some change and reform in this damn country. So but, I, I have a question I want to throw out there. I, I use the Advil as an example. <clears throat> there's <clears throat> excuse me. There's uh, all the name brand drugs, and then there's the knockoff. Uh-huh. The the, the, the scientifically equivalent concoctions. Mm. Why the hell can't that be done? Because it's epinephrine, right? That's all it is. I, and I'm assuming mixed with other shit to make it not kill you or whatever. I don't right. Know. But, I, I mean, it's epinephrine. You put it in a thing, you stab yourself, you save yourself or someone else. I, like, I, think, I think it's the mechanism <clears throat> that the pen is made out of, not the ingredients. So a, a hydro, 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 is that a hydrodermic? Is that one of the things? The... <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah, you basically, you, you stab yourself. I don't use needles a lot. <laughs> right, you stab yourself and it auto-injects, basically. Yeah. So if that's hydro, whatever you said, then maybe. I, I may, <laughs> I th- or I, I, I make up shit, too, so. But th- th- this, isn't, this isn't the only, uh, this isn't the only cases of things like this happening, though. I mean, we just had... 
uh, oh shit, what the hell was it? That that drug that the, the helped the, the AIDS drug. Yeah, the, uh, the, that helped whatever. AIDS and shit like that, and it, it was jacked up like five thousand percent. Um, yeah, exactly. And yeah. eventually they got him on tax fraud or some shit like that. And uh, all the, that's all being still figured out in the courts. Meanwhile, people are fucking dying because they can't afford this cheap ass medication. The one yep. dude, yeah, so stupid. But either either way, we need to get big pharma out of uh, out of American business. Yep, 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 yep. So yep. shitty. Def- I mean, they, they're doing good work. They're providing an, a a necessary service, but there has to be some sort of regulation on. I mean, th- this is a necessity. Th- this would be like charging a thousand dollars for groceries. Like every every family sp- has to, like mandatory that you spend a thousand dollars at the grocery store every right. week. Right, and, and single well, those no. are like this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it would be like uh, uh, Wonder Bread becoming the only company that makes bread. You know, yeah. it's not it's not so much that because bread you make the ingredients. You can at the very least like no bullshit. Everything that is in your fridge and freezer in one way, shape, or form or of another, you can either grow in a garden. If you need to, you can raise a fucking pig. I mean, you can do those things. You, most people do not have the scientific know-how or the tools to make drugs, okay? Especially good ones that help people. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, you know, it, it's not within most people's reach. Almost everybody, not, okay, I don't, so not everybody, but a lot of people can grow stuff in a garden that you're supposed to eat and not make you trip. <laughs> like, you know, people can do that. So the, the idea of the grocery store is, yes, it's a convenience. Dr- medicine is not a convenience. It's not a, oh, well, you get to live another day. That's the part that pisses me off is that yeah. they treat it as if they are providing some kind of, you know, like, like oh, let's right. let's go to the theme park. Here's a special treat for you. That's right, not right. what it is. You are taking away somebody's right to life. Like at the end of the day, if you say you're we're jacking this price up, you're killing somebody. You know, right. there's a the family right. somewhere that can't do that. There is something like that. And I'm not saying they're not ever allowed to raise their prices, but you know, with along the line, along the lines of what you guys said, there needs to be a certain level that they can raise them. You know, if if they want to make more money, I, I guess okay, that's fine. Spend some of that revenue and come up with better stuff. Come up with a you know a cheaper way to develop it and sell more. Or well, you know. that, that's just like the uh, the, the oil companies, the oil companies in the uh, in the mid 2000s. We're bringing in record profits, ten billion dollars a quarter or a month or whatever it was. It was like these insane profits, and then they were approached by Congress and like, so why do you need all this money? Why are we paying so much in gas if you're making all these profits? And they were like, well, we have to have money to research new prospects. So this ten billion dollars is going to be spent on that? They're like, no, no, that's just a profit. We have the other money we already spent on research stuff, but that's why we have to have profits. So we can continue to research. They're like, that's, right. that's, that's shitty, shitty just economics right there. But, I mean, what are you going to do? Because they've all got their hands in, in every congressman, congresswoman out there. So, it's really, Well, yeah, I would say that that, that is part of, a pro, uh, part of the problem. The fact that, uh, you know, lobbyists, the, the, the whole point of lobbyists is to um, basically to influence the way laws are written. That's the whole point. They're, they're, and, they're supposed to be an advisory body to help lawmakers understand more yeah, about exactly. the problem so they're not making, making blind judgments on the rules that should be passed. Right, but the, the problem with that process is it's not a public process, nor is it an equal share, like equal time, equal share kind of... Exactly. Not everyone can gain an audience. You have to basically buy the politician's time. And right. that's, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's where it sits. Okay. I still want I, one more question. Is this made in other countries? Oh, I'm sure it is. So why the hell don't people buy it from there? Like, I can... 
so I, so if you if you buy if you buy drugs from another country, you run you run a few risks. One, you run the risk of it not being controlled by the FDA, so you don't have any legal backing if it's the wrong shit. Two, you don't know that what they're sending you is actually what it what they're supposed to be sending you, and if it gets confiscated at the border, you can be held liable as re, as the intended recipient for it. So if if you are trying to buy uh, epinephrine, but you end up buying uh, 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 like highly concentrated THC. <laughs> then, then you're you're you are responsible as the intended recipient of that highly concentrated THC. Oh, and, and here's the thing too: I don't think we can import. I don't think like citizens can import. Uh, that's drug. that's the next part of it. Is anything that's uh, that's a uh, I think like a class three, class two, or obviously class one substance can't be imported without a proper license. So you can buy aspirin from another country, but you can't buy. Um, anything that would require prescription or higher, which is anything that's class three, I believe. Uh, I know class two and definitely not class one, obviously. Right. So, right. so there, basically there's a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo that you have to go through. Plus you run the risk of it not being the shit that you wanted to buy. Yeah. And plus the board of directors for the companies have to, uh, like double their pay. Right. <laughs> and, and you don't, you don't want to be having an allergy attack. Say you saw out a couple of peanuts you didn't mean to eat. You have an allergy attack. You go to shoot yourself, and while you're choking, you realize, nope, Dallas concentrated THC. Now I'm going to die high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if you got to die, <laughs> if you're going to go, go all the way. But so. think about all the money that they saved. They're eating, lo- they're choking on lobster. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> oh, man. Holy shit. Um, so I saw another article this week that, that said iOS versus Android is shaping up to be the new Mac versus Windows. And, man, I got to tell you, this was a 9, nine to 5 Mac article, and it was a very interesting read. I know we don't, we don't, we don't do a whole lot of like actual news and shit like that, but I, lo- I thought this was a great commentary. Um, I, I, I've, been, I've been really reading a lot of, a lot, a lot of these news people lately. And this was one of those articles that made me really think. What do you think is is Mac versus and or iOS versus Android the new Mac versus Windows? Yes. I don't think it's the new. I think iOS versus Android. Or I mean, I, I'm sorry. I think Mac versus Windows is like the grandpa's of what iOS versus Android is now and has been for a couple of years. Yeah. So okay, let me ask you this then. Um, where did that where did that actually happen where did that where did the the war actually become to the point where android is going to be the new pc versus ios being the new mac i think it happened it started about 2 years ago once windows two, kind they were that was whenever windows was at the beginning of giving up because they realized they suck at mobile and that was also on the downslide of BlackBerry realizing we waited too long. Um, I mean, that to me, that's where it was because I, I work in this industry and that is exactly what happens. I have people that want this or they want that and they're not going back and forth and the entire time they will bash the other side and that's all they do. So I've got all right. I've got two points. I, I think it began when Google decided that they were going to do a mobile OS. I think that's when it started because when Google decides they're going to do something like that, they're taking it all the way. Okay. Uh, and then the other observation that I had is that the you know iOS users will bash Android, Android u- Android users will bash Apple. I think where that like why that's the case. Is because, like me, I was earlier in the program, I was talking about how I love the, the Apple ecosystem. Well, I love it. Not only is it, you know, it's user friendly or whatever, but I love it because it's, it's mine. Like all of my stuff works with each other. Mm-hmm. And the same with you. If you're in the Android ecosystem, well, fuck yeah, you're going to stay in the Android ecosystem. I mean, that's, you know, the, all your Google stuff works together. Why would you change that? Why would, no Android, if I was an Android user, like from, you know, two, three, four years ago, there's no way in hell I would switch to iPhone. Wouldn't right. happen. Because you're, 
you already live in that ecosystem. So I, I might be in, a, in an interesting situation here. Um, I had an Android phone and an Apple phone, an uh, iOS phone, back in 2011, 2010, 2010. 2010, right? Uh, it was uh, Android 2.0 or something like that. And iOS 4, I think, iOS 3 maybe. And I guess it's probably not unique. There's probably a lot of us. But I had service on both phones, and I was actively using both phones. I was at the end of a contract with one company, and I had just gotten my iPhone because with AT&T because that's the only one you could get. So I was waiting for my Verizon contract to run out, which eventually didn't ever actually happen. I still have that number <laughs> <laughs> um, because AT&T sucks. Uh, so uh, hashtag Verizon. Um, <laughs> I uh, I used both of them side by side, and I actually had the Android phone first. The the, the Droid X was the one that I was using at, you know, when I had both of them. I had had Android phones before that. I was already touting how awesome Android was, letting people know I was. I had my mom on an Android phone, and then I used iOS. And the hacker cracker nerd geek jerk in me. <laughs> loved Android, simply loved Android. And the iOS side was all about simplicity. I know exactly what's going on here. I know exactly how to tell people how to fix it. It's just easier. And as a tech guy, I, have a, I had had and now still have a lot of people asking me my opinion and on, on what's better and everything else and how to fix things. And what I found was that most people, at least at that time, were not tech savvy enough to utilize Android to its fullest extent. So iOS was just simply easier. And when you're paying $200 for a phone on contract, regardless of which one you got, it was an easy, easy takeaway for that. That's how I got my wife on iPhone from Android, which I had originally convinced her to get. And since then, it's just been all iOS. I think that the original transition happened when Android came out as an open source, free distribution with a reference model in the original Nexus. Yeah, okay. When, when that happened, Microsoft was in transit. They'd given up on, on Windows Mobile OS, right? They'd given up on that. They hadn't gotten into Windows 8 Mobile or whatever yet. <laughs> and BlackBerry had just made their first mistake, which was the phone we talked about earlier, the BlackBerry Storm. Mm. It, oh, I was a fan of that. It, 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 was, it was a great phone, but it did not live up to the hype. It was, it was hyped yep. up, not, and probably not even BlackBerry's fault. It was hyped up as the iPhone uh, competitor. Yep. I, don't, uh, I, don't like, I don't like to say killer because, seriously, even then, you should have known nothing was killing the iPhone. Um, but it was billed as the iPhone competitor, like a one-for-one one competitor, and it simply did not live up to it. And once, yeah, no, it, it, it's interesting when you said that the the key to the success, or the I guess the origin of the success story of Android, was Google's decision to make it open source. This re, what this reminds me of is Windows. Like every copy of Windows having Internet Explorer. Remember the Explorer Navigator War, yep. the browser wars from the like late 90s, early 2000s? What eventually killed Navigator was that every computer in everybody's house already had Explorer on it, and they're not going to waste their time to download Navigator. Where in this case, if you don't want an Apple product, well, you have Google's OS on your phone. Yep. No, yep. that's that's and, and, that's and, what and, makes Android. Big. And you had every company and their brother throw an Android on the phone, exactly, which give you so many different choices. And you still have Apple controlling their hardware and controlling their the experience. And it's it's exactly the same. It's it's not even a question if it's it, is it the new uh, Mac versus Windows. It's clearly. Yeah, the new Mac versus Windows. The only thing about that article that confused me was the fact that they used the operator new. Like, I don't think this is new. This is like, <laughs> this article would have made sense like two to three years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is so not the, 
all the, the, the part in this article that I find the most amusing is it, it's somewhere down. I don't know. I'm pointing at my screen as if you can see where I'm pointing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's right there. Uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's the oh, I see it. Android holds 86%, and then iOS holds 13%. And I think a lot of people look at that and say, oh, well, Android's killing iPhone. No. Yes and no. Like, it, it, I, I don't, I'm not really sure where I'm going with this, but there's so many more manufacturers that take free software that they don't have to develop, they don't have to work on. They can throw it on a $30 smartphone or they can throw it on a $1,000 smartphone. The only difference are the, the ingredients to build the phone. You save so much money building or having the software built for you. If you just put different levels of components to make it faster, more effective, better camera, all this, those are physical features, not software. Yeah. You know, Apple makes two phones a year now. Yeah. Well, three. Two, two well, well, I guess with the S two, two, two in a size up. Yeah. <laughs> so even if we go, you know, three total new release phones in a in a year cycle, there's been seven new Android devices in the past two months. Yep. Big, yeah. big nut names, well, not so just here's, oh, here's a stupid Chinese carrier with a random one that's nine dollars. Here's what I think you're getting at, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it up on screen. Android has 86.2% oh. of the market. iOS has 12.9% of the market. But then when you look at actual companies that build the phones, Samsung is the biggest Android uh, producer at 22%. Apple still has that same 12.9%. Exactly. You know, everybody can creep around them, but they still have that same base. And it's only that one phone, whereas with Android, you got 50... Like, you can... You can find, you know, 50 burger joints, but you're only going to find like two or three really good steak joints. Oh my God. That is so great that LG is not even on there anymore. They just give, <laughs> give up. Yeah, they've just given up. They're just like, we're fucking done. But, we but, gave you a removable battery with a weird clicky bottom and you don't want it. Yeah. But now we have, but now we have Xiaomi. I love that name. I, just, I think the name's amazing. Xiaomi. So. There's, there's, there's all that. That's, uh, that's, I, I just, I find it interesting. I, I love watching the battle. I've, I've loved it for years and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to see where it's going to go. And in two weeks, roughly ish, we're going to have another Apple event. I'm sure we're all going to be psyched up that day and we're going to get over it. And then the new phones are going to come out and I'm going to get all excited again. And then I'll get over it because really I could still be with my six plus. And yeah, I was gonna say it's not time for your upgrade. So, oh, I don't do upgrades anymore. I'm 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 sticking with my phone. Like I got I got what I need right here. Right, right. Uh, so. Quick question: Do you guys have wearables, like watches or anything? What is your? Do I, you use the Apple Watch or what's your preference? It, I'm. I, I have the Apple Watch. How do you like it? I'm debating on whether or not to jump in. It, it really depends on what you want from it. I like it because, especially at work, in my job, pulling out my phone all the time is ridiculous. But I can choose which notifications I get on my watch, and I can see it. It's very clear. It's very easy to understand. It's easy to reply with. And other basic information, like my heart rate and things like that, some of the health information, it's convenient. And I was always pulling my phone out to check the time anyway. Now I don't have to do that, so I'm not wasting the battery. It, it, like it's it's what's the killer feature? There isn't one. Like I've had I've had this thing for a little over a year now, and I still don't know what the killer feature is. But I wear it every fucking day, and I use it all the time. Is it more of a convenience thing? Is that what the killer feature is? Is that it's convenient to not have to pull your phone out, and you can quickly see. That, what it is and if it's important. If if there is one feature that, that was the that I had to mark as the, the top feature, that is just it. It's the convenience of being able to sit in a meeting and just roll my wrist and okay, my wife just texts me, she's ready to for pickup. As soon as I get out of the meeting, I gotta go pick her up. Gotcha. Or I'm talking to somebody and my, my, my you know, my phone doesn't even vibrate anymore. It just vibrates my wrist. So the person's talking to me, I can just look at my wrist real quick, know what's going on and move on with my day. Um so it's it, it is convenience. I'm 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 interested to see where 
where they go as far as hardware. I've already got iOS three or uh, Watch OS three beta on my on my watch because that was too easy, Apple. And um, I I like it. It's a different. It's a totally different change. If you were coming into the watch now, you would like this a lot more than the old stuff. But having been there since Watch OS one, it's a little harder to get into. But I like where they're going with it, and I have noticed zero speed lag, and it's actually faster on this operating system than our previous ones. So, it, it, I, 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 but I still don't know what that, holy shit. Like, I've been telling Kent, like, when I have a feature where I can tell Kent, do you have to have this watch because of this? That's the killer feature, and I still haven't told Kent that. Yep. So. Fair enough. I, I'm kind of waiting to see if they announce anything with uh, uh, cell connectivity and a camera. FaceTime camera. Not, like, I don't need yeah. a, I don't know why I want that. I just do it. I, <laughs> because Tracy, that's why. Because <laughs> what? Because Dick Tracy, that's why. Yes, exactly. Because Dick Tracy. You know, I'm just gonna tweet that. Just that's where. <laughs> <laughs> why have a FaceTime camera on the oh, watch uh, on the on the Apple Watch? Because Dick Tracy. Duh. Because Dick. Hello. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, did you guys hear about this this planet, Proxima B? Um, I That's, did when you threw it in the show notes. Was that the one near the sun or something? No, so Alpha, or I'm sorry, uh, Pro Proxima Centauri, which is the, the closest star to us, other than our own too many books. What you need is we discovered. Yoga, two -in -one laptop with an Intel Core so let's I close that window. <laughs> yeah, close it. <laughs> and I'm actually auto roll ads. God damn. I'm going to talk about that next, Amos. Um, <laughs> no, but so anyway, Proxima. Centauri is the closest star to us, other than our own sun. Scientists discovered a, a planet orbiting that star that's in the habitable zone. So just over four light, I'm sorry, four, yeah, but no, 42 light years? Four light years. Damn it, I forgot what it is now. It's super close to us. Compared <laughs> <laughs> to any other Hey, Actually, this, uh, this, this show is known for the uh, for the for the feet in the mouth, not for the accuracy or the humor. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, see, here's the thing. I was I actually was gonna open the article up so that I could reference it, and then I remembered why I put the next note in the show notes, uh, which I'll, <laughs> I'll get to in a minute. But uh, so anyway, this is a possibly life-supporting planet very near to the Earth. This is huge. This is, this is a planet that we're going to be able to, in the very near future, travel to and study and possibly find life. Uh, it, it's a big deal, like a huge deal in the science community. And I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on what if, what if there are life forms living there. And I'm not talking about like microscopic, like a, a, you know, a microbe or something like that, which in itself would be huge. But I'm talking about we find shit walking around or even like people okay walking real around. quick the thing that i have always imagined on another planet <clears throat> is that they don't walk or stand upright they just roll everywhere <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm not even joking that is something that i've just because there's no exact duplicate like that's their thing they're just like oh, and they just roll around but <laughs> <laughs> um so what if we find just, a, just a, a homogenous just, mass? Just, just, just. We find like a village of, of, of roly polies <laughs> <laughs> with like, lasers on their heads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, there's got to be lasers, <laughs> lasers on the heads. Um, I, you know what, man? I just want Kryn. Like, I don't even care about other planets and shit. I just want Kryn. Just give me a, pla a place where I can find Kinder, dude. That's really all I fucking want. That's all I want out of space. I just want a place where I can find Kinder. Like, that's yeah, it. I don't know if I want a planet full of Kinder, though. I mean, that's... For, for, for those not in the know, this is a, a character from the Dragonlance fantasy setting. Oh, uh, thank you Kinder for explaining a, this. Yeah, a, <laughs> Kinder is a type of halfling, which, um, to put that in reference for the layman, a hobbit is also a halfling. So it's that, like, kind of half-man type fantasy character. Uh, Kinder are a mischievous race. Uh, they have no fear. They are all kleptomaniacs. 
<laughs> they're they're kind of childlike. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, they're they're kind of childlike. I I actually have the Dragonlance book, so yeah, I, can, I can show that one. Right. Like I got to win on some some kind of level. So no. so Amos, would you actually want a planet full of Kinder? Full of Kinder? No, but you throw some dragons in there and a, and a couple magic users. I'm down, dude. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, that's great. What if there was a planet that 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 is intelligent but not as advanced? Imagine it's a duplicate Earth from a thousand years ago. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. I see where or, you're going there. Or even a thousand years ahead of us. Like, oh no, because then we die. That's <laughs> what's that? If they're a thousand years ahead of us, we die. Like that's 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 a sad story. <laughs> but what if they're just like, yeah, here, bro, take this. A material that you can't even pronounce because you don't understand what it is. What if they're what if they're exceptionally warlike? They're not humanoid in any way, shape, or form, and they're a thousand years behind us in technology. So it'd be like it'd be like when you're playing D and D and you're playing like a level ten warrior, and the and the DM just keeps throwing level one orcs at you. <laughs> you know, and you're just smacking the shit out of them forever, and it's like these orcs just don't stop. This is bullshit. You know, well, I mean, if if they if they are the planet that I always envision envisioned of roly polies, then you just put a bunch of speed bumps everywhere and you're good. Oh, <laughs> see there we go. <laughs> Which okay, most of our science fiction about about aliens finding alien life or whatever is about us being invaded by a superior race or a technologically superior race. What if we're invaded by a race that's not as far along as we are? Like they're just. Seriously, accidental. Like they, they barely got out of their atmosphere, and some gravitational shift shot them 300 light years to us, and they, they're cir they're circling around our moon right now, starving. So, like if our uh, like our Apollo missions from the 60s and 70s, yes, yes, accidentally landed on. I'm, <laughs> like I'm, I'm, not, even, I'm not. I'm not even talking about like like Apollo. Apollo is more advanced. I'm talking about like the that first Russian dude that just broke out of the out of our atmosphere. <laughs> And instead of like coming down because they did a fucked up calculation of gravity, it just kind of shot him out, you know. Um, like and he, and he just shows up, like it'd be some weird shit. Like he just shows up, thinking, "Oh my god, like the world is in color. What the fuck is going on?" You know, <laughs> the world is in color. <laughs> what year did that happen anyway? When when the Earth just suddenly became color? Um, like it, it was in the late fifties. It's hard to find documentation on that. I bet that was shock to the populace. <laughs> it's our, so our, weird. Our, Everybody our, moved, but there was no audio until like 1910. Right. How did people <laughs> communicate? <laughs> Through piano, duh. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> carried around <laughs> signs. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that transition. <laughs> well, Jim, you can go right over there to the store. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you knew the conversation was over you know <laughs> there were no emojis there was just sad trombone wah, yeah. wah, wah. Oh, okay i just saw this jackie threw this in here what if it is almost like an exact duplicate like a mirror planet like let me rephrase exact duplicate an exact duplicate but behind us so it's like, um, so so it's not even like another planet. It's like an alternate universe of ourselves oh, just behind it's an, us. It's another planet with the same named people, and I guess you could say alternate be, because it's different, but it's the same. But it's not alternate. It's the same. It's a duplicate oh, it's almost a past version. So it'd be just like time traveling, like a hundred years back or fifty years yeah. back for the. Which, as soon as we get there, it's fucked because we would change something. Exactly. Oh yeah, but yeah. We turn change our Earth, like our we'll call it Earth Prime. Would it would that <laughs> affect Earth Prime in any way? Well, so, some asshole would drop no. his fucking iPod or something like that and fuck the entire timeline up. Like right out the gate, that's happening. <laughs> I'm gonna give you all. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Rick Roll the oh, 1955er. Oh that's what I would do. You want to be the ultimate jokester? If you find a planet that is so far behind you, you leave an iPod, CDs, all of this crap, okay? And that's the only song that's on it. 
they're just going to be like, this is musical genius. And it becomes like the world anthem. Never going to give you up. Never going to fucking like covers of like, never going to give you up. Like just everything. Oh, oh <laughs> even, even better. Even better. How about just a uh, badly uh, a, 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 a recording, a video recording of Millie Vanilli live. Oh, God. Huh? But we don't want an entire planet to commit suicide. <laughs> yeah, see that would because be that's what would happen. <laughs> isn't, isn't this like the in Star Trek? Isn't it the the prime directive to not fuck up the progression of a of another civilization? Right. And meanwhile, like, that's this, exactly this, what this they do the, every episode. <laughs> right. This is the prime example of what not to do. <laughs> You know, Holy that's shit. a good point, too. What if we could get there? Would we go? I mean, I, I know think... we'll go, but, like, right. if you get there and they are so far behind, would you just kind of be like, eh, I can go in and I can be like, a god, because I can tell them the Mets will win. And like, No, see, I, I think what we would do is show up in cornfields at night and kidnap them and perform anal probes. Whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey. Can't, leave can't. Where the can we're not we're, I, we we promise not to talk about certain personal details live on the air man oh no 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 i was talking hypothetically like yeah uh, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah, yeah 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 hypothetically hypothetically what if um fine i'll fine anyway you can cut this <laughs> so um yeah so hypothetically <laughs> take two <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my man. so, so uh, what would be be that would we be the alien invaders of like um you know destroy the civilization and take the planet for ourselves or would we be like the the um like what do they call them the greys or whatever like the the aliens that come in the night and kidnap you and do experiments right 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 what, or would we be like the silent observers from like the dark side of the moon or some shit like I, what i still i still get fucked up on the idea that we're we might might be someone else's lab experiment and we oh, would, and we would never wrong. know yeah. Like we we might be living in a planetary sized Truman show and not fucking have any idea. Right. I Dude, think we're teacher dish. The Matrix like, has always fucked with me. <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah. no idea. Like like you it's you can't discount it, you know? There's no way to there's no way to genuinely say no, that's not how it is. Oh man. There so, we go. Look at that. Oh, oh! A pile of stuff to put back after this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh man. So yeah, just, so, have, uh, just have your gremlins put the stuff back. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Hey, um, so so we've got uh, we got several projects going on. Speaking of alternate universes and and random shit, um. Tom, you've got a couple projects going on uh, where you like to remix random shit that people put on the internet and make it uh, either funnier or just completely obnoxious. And yeah. uh, tell us it's a little just, bit about that. It's kind of the same thing, right? Uh, well, with the shit that he's remixing, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying, obnoxious, funny, whatever you want to call it. And that's it how it starts. In one category or another. And that's just how it starts. But yeah, that's uh, it's called the Modern Rogue Remix. Uh, it started out as I was watching uh, Brian and Jason's um, The Modern Rogue episodes that they do, and I forget exactly what it was, but somebody uh, said something that was funny as hell to me, and I went through and uh, caught a clip of it on Vine and all that stuff, and it was funny. So I started to mess around with like the next episode and cutting out funny clips, and then I just rearranged them and made them say completely stupid and useless stuff. And um, at one point, a couple episodes into the Modern Road Remix, Brian and Jason were promoting their uh, offer code for their uh, sponsor. And they said, hey, uh, make a website and we'll feature it. And I reached out to them to make sure it would be first or OK first. And they were cool with the idea. So I went through, made the Modern Rogue, the Modern Rogue Remix dot net. I purposefully did that on purpose so it didn't mess with their dot com or anything like that. But um, right. uh, yeah, it's just kind of turned into a little side fun hobby. 
Um, it was actually really entertaining because, uh, quick little side jag, whenever we were down in Orlando, um, it was on a, um, a Friday whenever Brian and uh, Bryce showed up and uh, they met us at a bar to get lunch and everything. And while I'm sitting there, they posted the Modern Rogue episode. So I get the notification, everybody's talking, we're eating. I pulled up my iPad, started doing stuff, remixing it. And my Bluetooth headphones disconnected from my iPad. And then Brian heard himself. And he kind of <laughs> looked over and he goes, are you doing, is that, you're doing that? He's like, yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm doing. And he just kind of watched me and I, I got done and everything. He goes, that's funny shit. <laughs> <laughs> so i knew I, I i'm on the right track of you know just kind of messing with stuff but it's a lot of fun um yeah vine is where i do it at i throw extended remixes up on the uh th the facebook page it has like a whopping like 12 subscribers that's <laughs> hey, uh that's like four times more than this show so um yeah uh, okay. you're, do you're doing great four of them are of my own so <laughs> No, the stuff it, the stuff is pretty funny, especially if if you're a fan of of Brian and Jason. Uh, we're talking about Brian Brushwood and and uh, uh, Jason Murphy. Uh, Murphy. Murphy. Jesus, uh, like, Murphy. Like you just corrected me on this earlier this week on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh man, uh, oh it's 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 hilarious. Uh, yeah, definitely check it out. What was the website again, Tom? It is themodernrogueremix.net. So yeah, exactly. fun, funny, little, be show notes. funny little story. When he actually put that up there, he was at his hunting around, hoping people could help him out, make sure that it was you know operational and looking good and everything yes. else. And I was like, hell yeah, dude, I'm all over it. And like the next three days were the busiest three fucking days of my because it was right after I got here. I was still living in a hotel in yes. in, in downtown yeah. Anchorage. And like the next three days were the busiest fucking days ever in that hotel. And finally, I go back to him I'm like, holy shit, hey, how's it going? He's like, yeah, it's up, man. We did it. It's cool. Yeah, so, like, because I, I, I did the Squarespace thing. That's their offer code, and I used it and everything. And I, I log in to, to create one because I've never done one before. So I'm just like, oh, this has, like, things I have to click and code and stuff. Well, apparently I clicked on, like, super developer mode or something. And uh, I went through, and eventually I just kind of figured out that if I clicked the right one, I could just drag and drop, which is all I want. <laughs> It's so easy. There yeah. you go. Um, you have a, another little project. It's not necessarily a project. It's more of a... Uh, it's uh, like a personal meme. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Make America sticker again. And uh, I got to tell you, I was... So I missed out on the first the first sticker pack because I just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Like, you know, it'll be there. It's just, and he never changes shit. And, uh, exactly, right? and then, then I heard like, uh, so behind on podcast and I was catching up and I was like, yep, the, this Thursday is the last Thursday. I was like, ah, that's, uh, that's last Thursday. So that's not going to work. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, down in Orlando, you, you went down there and this, that's when I noticed this meme starting to pop up. And you were just basically putting fucking stickers everywhere. Like you must have bought like five million dollars worth of stickers. Cause you just putting them everywhere. Stop signs, bathroom stalls. Uh, it was it was funny. Like uh, you, you, I had you I bought Disney one of Brian's with them? Uh, packs a while ago, and I had a whole bunch of them left over. And I bought some whenever Brian or uh, 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 Justin put his out, and I bought some of Brett's for uh, um, uh, Mission Pick and. It was just I was just like, you know what? I'm going to be driving all the fucking way to Orlando, all the way back up, going to hang out in Tennessee for a few days. I'm going to like do something with these because it got to the point where it was just a stack of stickers that I'm never going to use. So I took them with me. And the first one I did was like at a gas station and I put one on the pump and one on a uh, one of Brian's on a Pepsi cooler, like right next to the Pepsi, Pepsi thing. And uh I put, uh, I thought it was funny because you're supposed to take pictures with Mission Pick, so I put it in the bathroom. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it just kind of turned into a thing the rest of the trip. Like, I just started, uh, I stole uh, or modified uh, Make America Sticker Again because of Trump's horrible campaign slogan. Right. And, and I went with that because of Jury's podcast. So I kind of tried to intertwine a couple things and together and 
Yeah. Uh, I plastered them all over Orlando. I dropped a link in there real quick. This is going to be for my uh, upcoming trip that I have stickers for. But um, you guys should uh, definitely support. Oh, God damn it. I don't remember Brett's website. It's like it's a it's a website. <laughs> and <laughs> if you just tweet at Amtrak and say, hey, where do I order stickers? He's really good about telling you where to buy them. <laughs> uh, but um, you can pick up Justin's uh, stickers, the one that we're just showing. Uh, uh, stickers are DIAF at or DIAF.com. And you can pick up uh, Brian's at uh, uh, scamstuff.com. You can order the stickers there. Uh, this is the uh, the stickers that I'm going to be taking with me. Um, Brian's stuff should be showing up here in the next day or two. I have like 40 some stickers of Brian BB logos coming to me. Oh, so nice. um, Atlanta is about to get fucked. So so this is this is what what, um, what it reminds me of back in the buzz buzz out loud days. There were stickers that they would hand out at events, or if you went to the, to CNET to go see them, or whatever else, and it was amazing. I never got any because they never ever had any, and they'd always be like, "Hey, we found another pack of fifty stickers," because they were always like, they never ordered them. They ordered uh, uh, like a thousand of them when they first got them, and just never ordered them again, right? And they'd be like, "Hey, we we got fifty of them. Just email the show and let us know what, why you want one." Blah, blah blah blah. And I'd always email the show, and I never got shit in return. Well, I think it might have been emailing the wrong people. But anyway, uh, somebody knows all about my love of BOL. <laughs> Meanwhile, so this sticker thing is like, it, it reminds me of that back in the day where, you know, you would be trying to get these stickers. And then here you are with all these extra stickers. You're just like, yeah, you know what? This fucking bathroom stall, that looks like a good spot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's just fun. Uh, the, I would say the, the number one favorite one that I have is... Uh, the one in Orlando of the jury, uh, please don't die, um, sticker where he took a picture beside it, which I thought that was really cool. Um, mm -hmm. because I know it's still there because, uh, I think it was Scotty emo found it and took a picture of it and tweeted it out again. So that means that it's still there, which I thought all of these were just going to disappear literally five minutes after I put them there. <laughs> and, uh, and pigeon, if anybody is listening, that is from pigeon forge, Tennessee, Look at the Pigeon Forge sign as if you're you're going from Gatlinburg into Pigeon Forge. The Welcome to Pigeon Forge sign on the left side of the road. There's one there. I I like got out of my car, tr uh, crossed like four lanes of traffic, and ah. like I yeah like it's legit. <laughs> That's awesome. That's <laughs> and awesome. it's it fits in perfectly with their sign, so I doubt anybody will ever take it down. That's awesome. Um, what else, what else you got going on, man? Anything else you need to, uh, need to tell people about? Um, just, uh, I mean, for the community, <laughs> follow me on, uh, on the tweeters, uh, follow me on the, uh, on the periscopes, uh, dragon cons coming up. There's about to be how many days of dragon con are there Four. So there's four. about to be four days worth of footage, um, <laughs> being, <laughs> being streamed light to your, right to your, uh, to your eye holes. So it's awesome. Right on. And what's your what's your handle on Twitter and Periscope and all the places? All the places are jury facts. So no, I do have to ask: is there is there like a uh, an alternate account, like a, an alter ego at Jury Fiction? <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. <laughs> like, should should you oh, should, should we let you go so you can go register that real quick? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone in chat room snags it. <laughs> There's so many tweets. Uh, tweeters, fuck, twitters that I have. Like, <laughs> I know. I was gonna say you probably have like when you open the Twitter on your phone and click on the the me thing, there's probably like twelve accounts. Yeah. just pop up. <laughs> jury, Actually, fi jury, well, fiction, yeah, jury, jury. No, the actual number. Jury false. It, jury. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them on here. Seven. See, and I keep would, in mind that there are other accounts that I do have on here that aren't that that are those are for other people that i don't like that's yeah. these are my fuck around counts <laughs> <laughs> gotcha gotcha i have two and i can't keep those straight half the time i'm fucking tweeting as ritual misery when i'm supposed to be tweeting as myself and yep <laughs> so sometimes i delete and correct and at most usually i don't i'm just like fuck it they, they know <laughs> it, 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 nah, yeah somebody fucked up on that one it's got to be amos okay 
<laughs> so what? Where would where would we find you on Twitter, Amos? At uh, Ethan Kane, because that makes sense. <laughs> it doesn't have to. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> the show is at Rachel Misery. Yeah. I'm at RM underscore Del Noche. Late to the game. And I'm yeah. That's you know underscore. That's you, automatically you know you're late to the Twitter game when you have an underscore in your name. Yep. Um, that that might or might not be why I'm not on Instagram. Uh, I'm just saying that, 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 that there's a possibility that that has affected my uh, desire to be on certain social networks. Uh, the availability of my name. Can people can also find uh, what kind of beer you're drinking because I know you're not drinking this one because holy hot no way. Uh, y- you can find my review of that beer though. Oh. If you go to <laughs> you can go to ratebeer.com, look up username Del Noche, and you can read what I had to say about it. Uh, well, let, let's uh, let's check that real quick. Let's, let's, uh, let's, oh, let's, are we gonna are we gonna look it up? You might be calling my see. bluff because I don't remember for sure. If I, I'm pretty sure I did. I've rated a lot of wine and cougar. <laughs> We're about to find out right here live on air because that makes sense right now. Um, so I'm either going to be proven right or I'm about to be called out as a liar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, oh, there you are right there. Losers, don't know, Jay. And uh, let's see. Boom. Doesn't even look like you. <laughs> Five, oh, man. That's a, that picture is from like eight or nine years ago when I lived in Germany. Yeah, it, it, it certainly looks, uh, looks new. <laughs> let's, let's, let's see if we can, if, see if we can find it here real quick <clears throat> because why not? Right. Um, uh, shit, I went too far. Let's go back one. Got some Rocheforts in there. Still on the ends. I'm looking for <laughs> E L E. God, I fucking missed it again. This is bullshit. How many beers you got? God damn it. Let's see, L L E I. I got over 500 reviews on ratebeer.com. According to this, you haven't reviewed a single uh, line in Google's. Uh, so you're a liar. You, no, I've rated a you're, lot of them. What, how liar. are you searching? Uh, by, by alphabetically. Scroll down. No, that's up. There no, is. there it is right there. So I'm a fucking I'm, say, I'm a liar. Like, you're not down far enough in the alphabet. Hey, I, I didn't say I was smart. This is bullshit. <laughs> he gave it a 1.6. It's got an average of out of, five. Out of uh, uh, weighted average is 2.5 out of five, and you gave it a 1.6. So you're in the lower end of the scale there. Yeah. Well, I I told you I was not a fan of that. Yeah. Definitely. Life. Definitely not. As it, as it shows right there. Can, can we have him read his review? I love this review. Oh my god! Okay, so <laughs> this is actually this isn't a very creative one. So uh, I had a twelve ounce bottle. And I poured it into a tulip glass. Uh, so and then here's my review of that beer. That it pours a light purple pinkish color with very little head. Smells like berries. It reminds me of wine. Tastes like berries. <laughs> Medium sour finish. It's okay for what it is, but I'm not a fan of this style. There you go. If you want more of that right there, if you want more of that beautiful beer <laughs> footage, cruise on over to ratebeer.com. Look up the username Del Noche, D-E-L-N-O-C-H-E, and uh, uh, find your favorite beer and see how badly he hated on your shit. Um, oh, so there you yeah. go. Some, some reviews are more, more entertaining than others. <laughs> That, that might be a game. Let the let the let the fans go out and find out what a good one is, and, and report back uh, either by, by Twitter or on our uh, subreddit, which is uh, ritualmisery dot dot reddit dot com, right? Yeah, that is yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, His okay, talking was so delayed. I, I was <laughs> about to agree with you. Like, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was an alley oop that became an alley oops. Um, so, <laughs> hey, uh, we are, we're doing something special here, man. Okay, so first of all, if you want to help us out, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Geekingamergear.com. That's geek, the letter N, gamergear.com. Cruise over there. There's all kinds of cool shit, video game stuff, nerd stuff, uh, anime stuff, cartoon stuff. There's basically just a ton of stuff, man. Cruise on over there. Use the code Ritual Misery at checkout. You get 10% off. And... I don't even know what we get out of that. I, I, like, I fucking don't know. But anyway, uh, you get 10% off your first, first order, so that's cool. And uh, we are cruising towards our 100th episode. We are quickly trying to line stuff up. We've got... Do we have anybody new this week? 
Because Jury Facts, we're episode number 92. That's Jury Facts. Number 93, who's that? That is going to be the return, the triumphant return of one Richard Gunther. Oh, shit. This is, this is his third show appearance, I believe, right? This is, I think, third or fourth. Th- he could be claiming the Undisputed Ritual Misery podcast guest crown. Um, so that's going to be awesome. He's, it's always a good time. I always find a ridiculous way to piss him off or put my foot in my mouth every time he's on, which, it, it, yeah, so that, that's going to be awesome. It's so much. The last time we had him on, okay, so Richard has a couple of different Twitter accounts that, that he uses, one, like one for each side of his personality, basically. But he aggregates them all with at Richard Gunther. And he has this one that is called What Annoys Me. So what I did was I mined like the last six months of that account and found everything that he bitched about, Put and I dock. sprinkled all of that into the conversation throughout the show. And he was just like, eventually he was like, are you fucking trolling me right now? <laughs> it, it was, made, it was made even better. It was made even better because he came to the show. He got there a little bit late. He had just left a fucking company dinner party where yes, he where so had a few. Split. So he was like half wasted when he got on the show and we just kept killing him from there. It was amazing. Just poke, poke, yeah. poke. <laughs> it's great. Such a good time. Once he figured it out, man, it was, he, he went through and started blasting us. It was a great time. I don't even know what episode that was, but he's, it's know. always fun Look, when Richard's yeah. on. So, Yeah, Rich, Richard is fantastic. I love the man and he makes a incredible guest so definitely tune in next so, week. so that's 93 do can we can we n- announce 94 are we firm nope. on 94 nope. can we, uh, we that can, 94 can, is confirmed but we are not going to announce that yet That'll can, come can, next can week. we announce number can we announce 95 <laughs> no. Uh, no how about how about, how about oh, no 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 how, how about, how about, 90, how about 96 like we have we have like like I I gotta know like how many of these are are I mean uh, you're killing me here man you're killing we, me we've got the next the next three shows are booked yeah like in the books with with, with like, absolutely amazing guests like we are we are this is an, this is an actual ramp up like we are cruising through yeah so and then uh, it, it'll be the the next three after that we got to kind of fight for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still well. We're still trying to nail it down. Um, scheduling issues, um, uh, people not responding to their emails. Issues. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> you don't say. In the world of podcasting and online media, there are people that don't answer their emails. No, but it's 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 awesome. We we absolutely have a lot of really great guests lined up. Um, some of the guests will probably surprise you people that that we will have them on Ritual Misery. Uh, but no, it's it's gonna be awesome. So, some uh, of, some wait, of the, wait 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 wait. Some of them will surprise me if we get them on Ritual Misery. So just <laughs> we're clear. Oh, oh, I was including me too. Like this was like the royal you, like yeah. all of you, including me. <laughs> all right. So uh, bird for that. Yeah. Us. Uh, us. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah. If if the only if only you could cut out one of those three letters and just be more direct with the definition. I don't know. I uh, small <laughs> things. Hey, um, we we're both wearing these. Uh, uh, well, I've got my Richard Misery shirt on tonight. He's got his Diamond Club shirt on. If you like shit like this, uh, we don't have any stickers, but you can cruise on over to slash swag pick up a shirt. Everything yeah. on there. I think everything on there is now at cost. Like we're not making any money off that. We just like people to. Have our shirts, man. I think it's fucking yeah, and, badass. And this is a standing offer too. If I if I see a, a fan with a ritual misery shirt in public, I am minimum I'm buying you a beer. Right. That's 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 just the going rate. That's yeah. Depending on on where it takes place, at what event or whatever, and, and how inebriated you are, <laughs> the shirt might pay for itself. Yeah. So that's that's very true. Very true. Especially at South by. Like I'm surprised. Like is that, that was nuts. So um. <laughs> And uh, as far as I know, we are planning on going to South by again next year. Oh, like it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of like that's, in my that's calendar like, that, already for the next. That's like, like semi solid. <laughs> it's not that's a recurring annual event. Yeah, yeah. If we're gonna make one, because we almost made Dragon Con this year, we almost made that happen. But uh, yeah. oh, um, real quick, speaking of Dragon Con, if anybody is going and you need a room, hit me up. Uh, I'm staying. Oh, need to turn that off. That person <laughs> needs a room. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
Hit me up. <laughs> uh, we are looking for a room right now, uh, or not looking for a room. We are looking for a roommate. Um, we got, I think, uh, probably two, maybe something like that. Spots open. Uh, if you're if you're uh, an orphan and you're going to be there, we will take you in. You can house with us. We will give you warm showers. <laughs> as long as you give us money. <laughs> that can be taken a few different ways. So um, <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> if, you'd, if you'd like to tell anything to the show, you can uh, email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-69-87672. And, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Um, thank you for listening. For Kent, for Tom, and for you, and for me, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> oh there. my god, we can see you now. This isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least the video is looking all right tonight. Yeah, let's 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 see how the audio is. It's looking all right tonight. <laughs>